Well, welcome everybody. I'm Jim Peacock with Peak Careers, and uh, we're going to do an uh, interview today talking about resilience for job seekers and the importance of having a uh, healthy body and mind. And today, my guests are Sabrina Woods, who is a holistic career coach and international trainer and speaker. Aileen Axtmeyer is a career coach and corporate wellness speaker, and Kim Belowchek, Belowchek excuse me, and uh, is a, also a career coach. Uh, so we're going to explore what the importance of this health and uh, bo healthy body and mind, and then also give some suggestions. Uh, what can you what can you do to to help take care of themselves? So Sabrina, Sabrina and I go back a long way. Actually, we have we have so many great great stories about how we met, and and she's like my kindred my kindred sister. I always think of Sabrina because we're both from Michigan, actually, and. Uh, we have so many things in common, and we've done a lot of things together. Aileen and I, she reminded me that we met, um, what, 10, 2000, what did you say, 11? Uh, and we think it was at a Nakata conference, so that's been a while. Uh, Kim, I've never met before, but uh, had the pleasure of meeting her, and and she came uh, recommended, I think, believe, I believe, from Sabrina. So uh, if you want to read the rest of their uh their uh, bios you certainly can do that if you're, if you're watching but right now what i want to do is take a dive into this topic with our our my guests so let's start off with aileen and many of our clients struggle to find that next job why is having a healthy body and mind so important so we all know that a job search is a marathon not a sprint so i think that that foundational understanding can go a long way in understanding why having a healthy body and brain is so important because many times when people are job searching, as we know, they're often feeling drained by their current position, whether it be a toxic work environment or just feeling like they're not using the skills that they want to. So they've already got energy coming out in that way and you know, doing the things like editing resumes, networking, that takes energy and also takes a good headspace. So when we don't hear back from positions we're excited about and invested in, that can take a toll. And all humans have a negativity bias. We all, you know, if you think about performance reviews, you hear eight things you've done wonderfully and one or two you haven't, you think about the one or two. So when we're not hearing back, um, it can be very easy for all people to, whether you're in a toxic environment or not, to start to go into that negativity spiral. So doing things that support a positive mental headspace as well as a healthy body can really help with the longevity that often is required for a search. Great. Yeah, so true. We do we do focus on the negativity. It's kind of like the, the, the whole idea of the gratitude journal, right? Where people, you write down three positive things every night. You, gotta, you almost have to pound those positive things in to sort of push those negative things out. Great, thank you. Uh, Kim, your thoughts? Um, my thoughts were a little bit different, right? If we're looking for something that's in better alignment with where we're, with who we are, if we're coming from a space that we're not physically or emotionally available or stable, grounded, um, that it's gonna be harder for us to um, align with the energy of whatever we're, wherever we're being pulled, right? So. We don't want to come from a negative space to another negative space. Um, so to be able to keep ourselves healthy and full of dis-ease, right? Even if it's not a formal disease, um, but be able to come from a place of clarity and um, really alignment with who you want to be, I think is important uh, to land someplace that's going to be where you want to be and not just a jumping from the frying pan into a fire, but that you have a, a more deliberate, conscious decision to move forward. Yeah, we lost you there just for, I I, I, I lost the, the sound just for a little bit. Just say that last sentence again, that last little part again, please. Uh, I don't know what I said. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I would say that, you know, coming from a place of who you truly are, an authentic place um, to be able to, uh, I think maybe what I said, maybe you heard this, um, not jumping from the fire pan into the fire, frying pan into the fire, but to come from someplace that you feel yeah. grounded and secure in who you are to be able to move into a place that 
authentically uh, in alignment with who you are and where you want to be. Right. Being authentic is so it's so critical and it, it's tough to do sometimes when you, when we play in our heads too much. Right. I mean, and I think that's one of the things that I wanted to uh, continue to explore here today a, a little bit, you know, so many people, they get stuck in their heads and they can't get out of them. And, and, and so you kind of have that tape that can, keeps going over and over about, I can't do this. I can't do this. And um, it's, it's tough to get out of that sometimes. Sabrina, let's. Uh, what What are your thoughts on uh, why is it so important to uh, have the healthy body and mind? I want to jump into a little bit of the neuroscience. I feel like what I've learned has helped me be better about managing my stress. It's helped me value that self-care where sometimes it self-care can sound so in self-indulgent, right? And be like, Oh yeah, you're going to just go pamper yourself. It's like, Oh, wait a minute. No, actually by paying attention to my anxiety and stress level and doing things to lower them, I'm actually taking care of my brain and my brain is going to better serve me when it's at its optimal place. So I want to talk three brain parts. I'm not a neuroscientist, so I might mess this up, but at least maybe we'll make you curious. And that's what I really want to do is kick off some curiosity in you about these topics. Let's just do prefrontal cortex first. This is where your critical thinking takes place. And chronic stress can actually cause the prefrontal cortex to shrink. Now that should scare you because you want to be able to do this critical thinking. This is where decision-making takes place. Here's another part of this. If this is compromised, our, our thinking is gonna get narrow, more narrow and you're gonna see fewer options. If you're a job seeker and you see fewer options out there, you're doing a huge disservice to yourself. So that's one brain part that can be affected by chronic stress. And I'm not talking about one time, oh, I'm a little stressed for an hour. I'm talking about when this goes on for weeks or months. Second brain part I wanna talk about is amygdala. We know the amygdala as the fear center. This is where that fight or flight gets activated. And it's a, it's a good thing to have that fight or flight, but we want that to be a short-term thing. And then we want the system to come back to normal. But if you wake up and you're anxious all the time, then you're gonna stay activated. And that's where it can start to affect other parts of your system as well. So that we don't wanna stay in that. We wanna have the system move back into that more calm, what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. One, the third brain part is the hippocampus. Chronic stress leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. Now, what is the hippocampus about? It is where we process our memory. It's where we have um, our emotional response to things. So what's happening with chronic stress is that it might make it harder for you to remember things. Boy, is that a problem in an interview or in a networking event? Like, ah, uh. so that's one thing. Another is it, it can make it harder for you to learn new things, which is really important when you first start a job or if you're switching industries and you're taking in a whole bunch of new information. The last part about the hippocampus is that it can, over time, Chronic stress can cause depression, and it's, it's part of the hippocampus where that's taking place. So we want to guard against depression, and we want to sort of put emphasis on our self-care and on our things that are going to lower our stress so that our brain can really work for us. So just wanted to put that little bit in there. Any neuroscientists out there, forgive me for the uh, you know <laughs> really, really one-on-one version uh, but what it's done is, like I said, it's made me really curious and interested. And it's been my motivation because I deal with stress. I deal with anxiety. Um, I'm something called an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person. Whole other topic for a different conversation. But it's made me acutely aware of how much I can impact my quality of life and my brain health just by taking and paying attention to those tips for how to um, de-stress, de which we're going to talk about in a second, but I'll turn it back over to Jim. Yeah, well, I, and actually, it's a, that's a great segue to my second question is, is so knowing all these facts and uh, neuroscience of the brain and what happens and how stress affects it, 
what what can you do? What are some of, what are some things that you can do? And we'll uh, st stay with Sabrina on this one, as long as we just finished talking with you about it. But this seems like yeah, I, all this stuff is going on in my head. And but what can I do? All right. So I want to tell a small story because it helped me remember this phrase. I was actually with a friend and I was starting to have a minor panic attack. I've had major ones and I've had minor ones. And if there are job seekers out here that have had this happen to you, I'm with you. They're scary. And what my friend said, she's a nurse and, a, and has a counseling background too, amazing friend. She said, take, you know, do what you can to breathe. Because when you take a deep breath, your brain is being told you're okay. So it's like, we're gonna send a signal. We think, oh, you know, people say that all the time, take a breath, but there really is something to it. Mm. That deep breath, we can't take when we're running from something. When there's a, a really acute situation where we have to act, we're not gonna take a deep breath. So it's this great little trigger. So breathing, <laughs> I'm famous for taking three long, slow, deep breaths with my clients and during my webinars and things like that. So there's a lot to it. The fact that breathing is so helpful. We're going to get into so many, but movement and taking breaks, but especially cardio. I've read research that says getting a cardio workout, 20 minutes of your heart rate up, can, can in some research be equally as good as medication for depression and anxiety. And that mm. just makes me go, wow, mm. we got a lot of power with being able to do that cardio. Um, there's a whole bunch more that I'd love to talk about, but I don't want to steal them all. I, I will say one more. I'm brand new at the cusp of this. And this is one that's kind of out there, but there's something called tapping. Its full name is emotional freedom technique. And it's about tapping um acupuncture points and it's so interesting because the sort of uh, i guess it's more of a chinese it maybe has an in influence from chinese medicine these points when we tap them we're disrupting energy that's that's not uh, balanced and we're helping it go back into balance i don't know very much about it but mm. i've started to do it for myself and if i'm feeling anxious and I've found it's helped. So mm. that one's like, again, really off the charts, could be seen as extremely unusual, alternative medicine kind of thing, but I wanted to throw it out there as one additional interesting way to deal with our anxiety. Okay, back to you, Jim. Probably wouldn't want to do the tapping in the middle of an interview. <laughs> no, yeah. maybe right before, right before you the tap interview. those points <laughs> yeah. that might help you. Top of the head is another one. Another but one is know, right in here. It's interesting. Uh, it, we're, we're, I knew we would likely talk about breathing because that's such a huge component of this. But that actually is something you can do in an interview. You can actually just, you could be in the middle of an interview and all too often our culture, we don't like that, that gap of silence, right? That silence. But taking a deep breath buys you some time. But it not only buys you some time to think, it buys you this time to deal with so the, the, this potential stress too. So that's, uh, I think that's a great tip. Kim, your thoughts? Yeah, I want to piggyback on the breathing piece because I think that's really important. Um, we uh, Breathing is the only system in our body that we can, the only involuntary system that we can override. Um, and it does send that signal, hey, everything's okay, right? It was designed that if we were being uh, chased by a tiger, that we have all these systems in place to be able to fight that tiger. Hopefully now most of us are getting chased by tigers, but we have all these other pieces, right? Jobs, relationships, technology, pandemic, all of these other pieces. So our stress level doesn't come down as nicely as it, if we were chased by a tiger, it comes up and it should come back down. Um, but in reality, we have all these other pieces, right? Uh, notifications from our phone, all these expectations and things that we need to do. So I think it's really important to be able to, and the breathing piece is easy because nobody knows you're doing it. Um, breathing can energize us if we're feeling uh, sort of lethargic after sitting in front of Zoom calls all day, but it can also calm us. And again, like Sabrina said, send that message that it's okay. Like if you can take a deep breath and 
you're probably not getting chased by a tiger or whatever that tiger uh, sort of substitute is for you now. Um, in terms of things for self-care, I think um, you know, we have this connotation that self-care is uh, selfish and it's really not. It, it gives mm -hmm. us a space to um, move from a point of abundance and a point of lack, right? So if we think about that example of um, having the, the oxygen mask come down and say, you know, we're going to give you oxygen, but that's only so you can help someone else. We're really just passing that sort of help of the oxygen. But if we use a different analogy that might be a cup that we're filling, right, to be able to move from abundance uh, as the cup overflows, that we're able to give of ourselves and, and take care of others around us in a more, um, a less lack way, but a more, uh, like I said, a more from a point of abundance. Um, so that could be anything. I think movement is a great piece. Um, meditation is a great piece. I know people think, oh, I can't meditate. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to sit still on a yoga mat with you know, incense burning, it could be photography, it could be a jigsaw puzzle, it could be going for a walk outside, um, it could be just taking some deep breaths, it could be some really simple pieces. Um, anytime you can disconnect from the things or people that are causing those stressful situations um, might be a great option for you to uh, take care of yourself. So um, I always have this piece about connecting with others. Um, we've been really disconnected for a while um, physically, uh, you know, some of us have met each other, like, I, I haven't met any of you in person, but I've only met you electronically or vi virtually. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, to have some a conversation in person um, is great. Um, we're also coming back into the holidays where things are pretty stressful. So if that means you're disconnecting from people that cause that anxiety, do that. <laughs> um, so any of those pieces could be self-care. I'm sure uh, Aileen has some others. I've got a whole... <clears throat> four pages of lists, but I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll stop there for now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and your what your comment about, uh, about it's not being selfish, really. I read a book, I was looking for it uh, and I finally found it cause it's, I read it years ago called the on purpose person. And it, and this guy does a tournament. Basically it's like a, a tournament where you have to list family, friends, work, health, spirit all these different areas and basically you have them all compete is is family more imp important than friends is is health more important than work and you kind of and then you have this playoff and it actually takes a long time it's a short book but it takes a long time and ultimately what i ended up with was the the one thing that i felt was the most important was taking care of myself healthy healthy wise because I can be a better dad if I'm healthy, right? I can be a better spouse if I'm healthy, right? I, I can do my work better if I'm healthy. And so it really feeds into what you just said, Kim, and that is it's not about being selfish. It's really about being gracious, really, up to others. If I'm being the best person that I can be today, then I, I, that affects lots of people, right? So, yeah, and it doesn't have to take a lot of time. I know that whole process that you described could take a lot of time, but taking time for you might be going to stand outside and take a few deep breaths. It could be just turning off your phone for 10 minutes. Um, my kids, I have two teenagers. My kids are the first to know that if I need a break, they're like, mom, <laughs> go for a walk, go take a class, go do some yoga, do something else for you. <laughs> go read a book, go watch a movie. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot, right? Um, That's right. These little, little snippets of pieces. So I don't want people to think that self-care is this big, like I, I need a lot of time to do it. It could be little increments of things that additively make a big difference. Great point. Aileen, your thoughts. I'm just loving all of this because I'm like, yes, yes. Like the tapping <laughs> solutions app is one of my favorites, Sabrina for EFT. Um, I love that they have, you can do a free version of the app and then they can walk you through different tapping for different things going on for you. So if it's trouble falling asleep, if it, you know, I could talk about that for a long time. And I'm which, in a- Which app was that? It's called the Tapping Solution app. It's a really, really good one. Um, that's the that's my go-to. I'm sure there's plenty out there, but I found that one to be, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a wonderful resource. And then the breathing, I'm doing a breathwork certification right now. And I'm a yoga instructor. So all of this, I'm like, silently clapping over here so <laughs> just loving the conversation mm -hmm. to add to it I'll, I'll i'll just note two things one is that 
the best way to take care of yourself is the thing you already know makes you feel more like your best self that you're just not doing. So I think all of these are wonderful, but so many people, whether it be my clients or I, when I do my corporate presentations, you know, I share tips, tricks, strategies, but 99.9% of people already have that one thing that they know is like, is like that long exhale is like that breath of fresh air is bringing that, uh, pot of boiling water. That is their, their stress levels down and it's unique to all of us And there. There might be overlap, but we're our own worst enemies when it comes to implementing the things that we know are effective. So my, my kind of big picture zooming out is what's the thing you already know and how can you maybe look at some habit strategies and behavioral interventions to, to follow through and to prioritize and do those things. So if people haven't read the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, highly, highly recommend it. It will help you feel better. Like that negativity bias we were talking about will help you not beat yourself up about having not seen some things through when you've set out to do them before. And like Kim was saying, it, it, one of the recommendations is to break down whatever you're trying to do to just a two minute version. And yeah, habit has to be created before it can be improved. So I won't go on and on because that book has so many gems, but definitely recommend that resource too. So doing the thing you already know, even just reframing it as what makes you a better person. Uh, one of my private yoga clients says, all of my colleagues know I'm my nicest self after our yoga session. So what makes you your nicer self? Like Jim was saying, right? I'm a better dad, I'm a better partner. And then the other piece I want to add is sleep. So everything else we do is impacted by this foundational wellness practice. And most people have room to improve, whether it be the quality or the quantity of their sleep. So like Sabrina was saying earlier, if you're stressed, think about how or your memory, your recall is not coming up well and you're interviewing, that's going to impact your job search. Same thing with sleep. If you're not getting that adequate quality and quantity of sleep, everything else suffers. Your That negativity bias is stronger. You have less self-compassion and you'll tend to just have a, a more negative outlook on, on everything that attention to detail. I mean, the studies on sleep are uh, pretty impressive. And my favorite book for this is Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. Sabrina's uh, loving that resource too. So he is a podcast too. So if you don't want to read a book, he's, he's taking things from, he's a sleep researcher of over 25 years now and a professor. And he breaks down certain topics like caffeine and like blue light and things like that to nap or to not nap into these little sound bites. So that's a wonderful tool too, but that's the kind of same idea. I mean, raise your hand. If you know, you could go to bed a little earlier than you do. And you often just don't, you get sucked into doom scrolling or Netflix or whatever it might be. So what's within your control <clears throat> bedtime and, or whatever other stress and wellness related strategy that you can just revisit and reprioritize. Oh man. So many great, great, uh, thoughts on that one uh on my favorite is my app is the calm and uh, there's a bunch of sleep apps in there sleeping meditations that are in there and, and uh every once in a while I, I i do feel myself not you know kind of having trouble uh, i know i'm tired but i can't go to sleep and they just are really helpful at, at slowing you know my brain down and and so i've and i've done them enough now that if i get up in the middle of the night and I'm having trouble falling back to sleep. I can just walk. I don't have to go up and get my phone and plug my earbuds in. I can kind of walk myself through that. But it is so, so important. And the other point I, I want to stress with with what, what you just said, Aileen, was it you gotta find your own your own way, right? You know, and and what works. I think people, it, particularly meditation, people are like, well, you know, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Well, you probably can, but if it's not in your wheelhouse and if it's not with what you, what really works for you, don't try. Don't 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 pressure yourself. I know Sabrina and I are big walking meditation people, you know, and and, um, and sometimes that meditation, as Kim said, it doesn't have to be meditation where you're actually sitting doing nothing. Sometimes 
it's sitting and doing nothing while you're walking, right? I mean, it, it, it's really to slow yourself down. And for me, my my trigger is is being outdoors. I mean, that's definitely my trigger. I mean, I want to be out. I'd I'd love to be outside. I love camping. I love all the all things outdoors. And I think that's why I like walking meditation so much. So, other Sabrina, Kim, other kind of thoughts on self care for people here. Can I add one note on something you said, um, how you wake up in the middle of the night and now you've done it enough. So you just kind of go through it. There's a practice a lot of you have probably heard of already, but yoga nidra. So it's a form of meditation. It's not necessarily yoga, but it's a guided, basically body relaxation and a body scan. And it's a form of what you call non deep sleep rest. So for some people listening, they might want to get better quality or quantity of sleep, but struggle. And so my heart goes out to those people. I know that we all go through different seasons and some seasons facilitate better sleep than others, but the studies are significant in showing doing something like yoga nidra or non-deep sleep rest. I'm hopefully getting that acronym right. <laughs> um, it can rejuvenate you in a similar way that sleep does. And the more you do it any time of day, if you have trouble falling asleep or getting back to sleep in the middle of the night, same idea as you were saying, Jim, you can kind of tap back into it and you're retraining your brain on how to calm your nervous system and remember how to go back to sleep. So I just wanted to plug that. Great point, Aileen. I, oh, go ahead, Sabrina. Well, Kim, go ahead. Go ahead, Kim, and then we'll go to Sabrina. Yeah. So I was just going to say that, you know, some of the things we're talking about go back to that healthy body, healthy mind, right? Um, this is, a, it's all a loop that, that comes together. So um, taking care of yourself and slowing down and giving yourself permission to take that time for yourself is so important. Um, and if that means um, with my clients, I sometimes have them really print out a permission slip. I, and I said it for me, I give you permission to select, schedule, regular acts of self-care without delay. You deserve it. You need it. Um, stick it on your refrigerator, stick it on your bathroom mirror, stick it, you know, get whoever you're living with to help you stay accountable to that um, and make them do the same thing, right? It's, it's all part of, um, you know, the, the society we live in moves so fast to be able to slow down and give our gifts, ourselves the gift of, of re-energizing ourselves in whatever way makes sense is not an option. It's, I think it's essential. Great point. Sabrina. I love this permission slip idea. <laughs> I do too. I love, I oh, do too. We, sometimes we have to have an external person give us permission, even though it's crazy to say that, but oh my goodness. Um, I, so many, so many have popped into my head and I'm trying to prioritize my own little list here. <laughs> um, busy minds, whether we're in the job search, whether we're going to interview the next day, we've got a lot that it, whether we feel like there's so many things on our plate if you have this really busy mind and you're trying to approach, you're getting close to sleep or, you know, even if it's eight o'clock at night, you might just take a moment and do a brain dump. So some people journal, write, And you can do, you can journal, journal writing. You can do what's called a free write, which is set a timer maybe for five minutes and continuously write the whole time. Or you could just say, what am I worried about? Do a worry bucket list mm. and jot down and just, even stuff that seems tiny. If we have it on here, we have more perspective and it's not eating us up as much and let us uh, prevent us from sleeping because we're trying to solve those problems. So that's one thing that came to mind, some form of journal writing or, or worry bucket list that you can get out. And emphasizing the importance about sleep, it's your opportunity for your brain to do that reset and so, and I've, I've been somebody who's had a lot of trouble recently with my sleep, um, with some things that are happening with my, with my parents that are hard. Uh, and so I'm really paying attention now to things like I have blue light glasses. I start to turn my lights out as the evening gets progressed. I have a shutoff time for my laptop. It's nine o'clock. I have a shutoff time for TV, typically 10, 10, 15, you know, and I'll be wearing the blue light glasses and, you know, showers can be a great way when you've been cold to actually calm yourself before bed. Um, I won't do caffeine. I don't even do chocolate anymore because chocolate has caffeine. So I don't do chocolate at nine o'clock at night. 
So, and eating your meals a little earlier. There are so many good yeah. little tips. Go to bed at the same time as you wake up. From Matthew Walker, I also learned get outside and get light, natural sunlight in the morning. It'll help reset your bio rhythm. Yeah. So sleep feels really foundational to me to everything else. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I function at half capacity. So that's the other one that I think we should all pay more attention to. Um especially for the long haul for our longevity. All right. We're talking everybody's ear off here, but wow. these are fun topics to bring up. <laughs> so, so, many, so many good things. So uh, we all, we mentioned a bunch of different, we've mentioned different apps and different books, and we're going to, we're going to include those in the, uh, in the YouTube channel where we're going to have this posted in the website. So we'll make sure we have that for all you listeners. Um, Cause I was scribbling as fast as I could on a bunch of stuff, but we'll make sure we have it. Um, Wow, this is great. I, I'm, a, I'm just such a huge proponent of, of taking care of yourself. And, and, and I just think there's so many, so many great points were made. And I think I often talk to people about the, there's perceived obstacles and then there's real obstacles. I mean, if you don't have a car, that's an obstacle, right? But like, like made me think of what, when Sabrina was talking about writing stuff down, sometimes those perceived obstacles, those, those, there's things in our head that when we can get it down, sometimes you, you just get it out of your head and you can look at it and go, it's really not that bad. Or I can deal with it another day or I can deal with it another way. But I think when it gets stuck up in here, if you don't have some way of getting it out and kind of cleaning up that, cleaning up the clutter in the brain, um, it, it just tends to, to fast, to fester, right? I mean, it just keeps going. And and I so I love the idea of writing it down. Yeah, Aileen? I don't know if anyone's heard of Dr. Guy Winch. He has a few books, but one of them is Emotional First Aid. And he talks about taking care of your emotions and your mental health in the same way as we take care of our physical health. So if you got a cut on your arm, you would address it right away, right? Uh, emotional wounds are the same thing, but oftentimes we kind of kick those to the curb. So he talks about this concept of rumination when we start to spin and spin and spin. And some of the studies show that taking a behavioral break, so as short as two minutes, but something that requires your focus and attention. So Sudoku, a puzzle, a wordle or hurdle, you know, those brain games. And the key is having that at your fingertips or decided on in advance. So you're not trying to think of the behavioral break idea while you're spinning out. Uh, just two minutes can be the thing to just change the channel in your brain, honestly. So I wanted to share that while it came up. Kim, one final thought did you have? Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, we as a society um, use busyness as a, a badge of honor. And, you know, I'm so busy. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. And in reality, we all make choices. Oh, we look you know, I've got two kids who play sports. I run a business. I teach yoga. I, you know, manage everything. Like we've got, we've got choices to do that. So if you can make those same choices to say, um, and I make an active decision to not say I'm busy. If somebody says, how are you? I might say, here's what I have going on today, or I'm really excited about doing this. I'm busy because I have a lot of cool stuff going on in my life. But if you can just pull that aside a little bit and then schedule those other small pieces, like Aileen said, two minutes, we can find two minutes, shut your computer off. My computer goes off way before nine o'clock <laughs> and my phone goes off at about 8 30. Um, and people know that if, you know, unless it's an emergency, I'm off, right? I'm not having deep conversations. I'm starting to wind down. So I encourage you to let go of that busyness and see if there's some time that you can make to slow down. Great point. Great point. Um, are you seeing my screen? It doesn't look right. Okay. Uh, anyways, I just want to, I, I think I'm just going to have to schedule another time with you three, uh, and we're going to have to do a follow up to this one, but, uh, we're going to, we're going to wrap this one up today and just, uh, uh, remind people that this is a peak careers interview. I'm Jim Peacock and I started peak careers with the facilitating career development class in 2001. Um, I have online seminars that I started in 2010 on a variety of different career topics. And they're different than other online classes or seminars. These are with a cohort of other career people, career coaches. They're four career coaches, career service providers. 
and they're discussion based. So each week there's different articles or activities and we talk about it and then we talk we take a deeper dive into whatever topic for five weeks and those are worth 15 hours of continuing ed. I love doing face-to-face -face workshops. They're back. I've done like eight this year, I think, and uh, they're great. I'm also the author of a field guide for career practitioners. And then The Adventure of Finding Me in New Zealand is not a career book, but it's a book I wrote about a, a year of travel I had taken years ago. Um, and if you are a career practitioner or a career counselor, anyone who delivers career services, feel free to sign up for my weekly career email and you'll get the top 10 tips of working with an undecided person. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. I'm, LinkedIn is my go-to place, but I'm, you'll find me on all those. So, folks, thank you so much. And, and so great to reconnect with Aileen after all these years and uh, to meet Kim. And then always nice to see Sabrina. Thank you all today.